I've talked in my last video about um, how our brains are, are really, really good at building cohesive narratives and, and really acting like a lawyer, you know, building a case around the belief or the opinion or whatever it is that we hold in our heads. Um, so I wanted to delve into that a little bit more today and kind of just talk about um, the risks of that, right? The risks, but more importantly, the things you can do to identify it, identify when that's happening. Um, when, when you're thinking about a topic or you're having a discussion or you're trying to make a decision and you find yourself um, starting to, everything's fitting together with this story and you're building momentum on it, um, how do you kind of check that and make sure that you're thinking objectively and you're really getting to the best possible answer or truth in the matter? Um, so, you know, the, one of the things I, I often talk about is this idea of checking instruments. So understanding... Um, you, you will have these blind spots. How can you use some sort of tool or some sort of flag or, or alarm to notify you that it's happening? What I found in, in these cases, when you're building that cohesive narrative, um, it's typically, um, you, you'll, you'll know that you hit something, right? That you hit a blind spot when you start to feel emotionally charged about the thing you're talking about, right? Once you start to feel an emotional reaction that kicks in, whether that be anger or rage or sadness, whatever, um, you know, you, you could you could be having a conversation about a particular topic and going along and, you know, disagreeing possibly everything seems okay. But when, once you feel it, once you feel that emotional trigger of, of something, um, that's that's typically a sign that you're, you're, you're touching on one of those blind spots. And the irony of it is, or the, the unfortunate part of it is, when that happens, what our minds usually try and get us to do is, is push it away, right? We, we react defensively. We try and kind of scare the other person off or outshout them. Um, or just shut down the conversation completely and walk away. We do all these sorts of steps to, to, to avoid that, <laughs> right? That emotional reaction, that thing that's getting us charged. Um, and it goes back to, you know, sayings that have been around for, for as long as time, you know, don't talk politics with family gatherings. There's this sense of like, you keep uncomfortable stuff away, you, you push it away. So in the spirit of that, I, I find that that's for me, a fantastic flag, a fantastic, you know, checking up the instruments is when I'm in a conversation with somebody and I feel that, I feel it getting revved up, I know instantly like, okay, that's something I need to, I need to be aware of this right now that's happening. And more importantly, you know, when I'm thinking about that after the fact or whenever else it might come up, um, it's, it's to dig in on that, right? Lean in on it. Um, again, the tendency is push it away, but that's the exact thing you should dig into and see like, hey, why is that triggering me? Like, why is that something that I feel so bothered by or makes me so angry, right? There was other things that were said, but that makes me so angry because odds are there's something irrational at play there. For you to get that emotionally charged on something, um, it suggests that there's, there's something irrational there. There's something that you haven't fully thought through or you're afraid of, right? It's really tied to your identity and you feel like you need it to protect you, whatever it is. There's something irrational that you're afraid of. It's not at all that different from the topic I talk about when, you know, when you're dealing with your children and, and they ask why. And uh, often parents will get annoyed when they ask why because they don't want to answer that question. It's the same feeling. I, I don't know that I have a good answer for that. So I'm going to shut it down. I don't, I don't want to um, delve into it. It's the same thing here, right? There's something irrational at play that we're trying to protect ourselves from. And what you recognize is, again, whether it's a decision you're making or a conversation you're having, your objective, typically, no matter what you think it is, right? It might be to convince this person of my view. It might be to learn better about their view. It might be all these different things. When, when, that, when that is at play, right? When that emotional trigger, when that, when that blind spot kicks in, um, it, it, it becomes... When that emotional trigger kicks in, it, it become, your objective becomes really just protecting your ego or, or yourself against whatever that thing is, right? You may not even realize it, most times people don't, but all of a sudden your objective completely changes and it's I need to address this issue to, to protect myself in some way. Um, so again, you could, you could see why that would be really problematic. If you're trying to get to some objective truth, if you're having to ha trying to have a really productive conversation with somebody, um, having these blind spots pop up that kind of trigger you to act irrationally, um, unproductive to the conversation or the decision that you're trying to make, um, it's, that's, that's problematic. You want to be rational. You want to be logical. You want to be very aware and in control of your thoughts and what's going on. Um, you want to try and separate you know, emotions and, and irrational thoughts from it. So it's something that you really need to try and address. Um, so again, what, what I've found useful is to, is to in the conversation, right? Let's assume it's a conversation. Um, if you're having a conversation with somebody and you feel that trigger, you feel that emotional reaction, lean into it in the conversation in a learning way, right? Try and understand what it is. And let me give you an example um, of where I see this, right? It's an instrument I now check. Um, so when, when, I, when I talk to my mother, 
on certain topics, right? Topics that we may disagree on or I haven't formulated an opinion on yet. Um, she will often ask questions. Um, you know, so, so I'll give you a perfect example. As we're in the midst of this coronavirus, um, one of the things I'm really excited to hopefully get back to at some point is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, just because I, I really enjoy it. There's obvious risks with that, um, going back to it and the ability to pick up, you know, the virus because you can't really social distance when you're doing that. Um, and then potentially passing it on to a family member, all those types of things. So there's an obvious, obvious concern there. Now, I want to be able to go back to jujitsu, right? My rational side understands that there may be limitations on that. It may take longer than I want it to. My rational side understands all of that. But my irrational part, part <laughs> that blind spot typically part, is like, I, I don't care. I want to go. I want, I want to make it happen. Not that I don't care, because I do care. But it's, it's, there's got to be some way to make this happen. Like, it, it has to happen. So what I'm trying to build then to support that when my lawyer part kicks in is to build a story that says, yeah, you can, you can make it happen. Again, not because I don't care about the risks. I'm going to try and talk myself into believing that the risks aren't really there, or at least they're small enough that I can go back. So I am in full lawyer mode building that cohesive narrative. So back to my mom, what I found in situations like this is when I speak to her about it and the topic comes up of you know, me trying to decide if I should go back or not, she'll ask simple questions sometimes like, are you sure that's a good idea for you to go back? Or, you know, do you think that's safe with not being able to social distance? Now, the objective me can sit and look at that and say, hey, those are, those are reasonable questions. In many ways, those are the right questions to be asking. And I know that, but they also hurt my case. So I don't, I don't like them and I don't want to entertain them. So when those questions get, that, get asked, typically, historically, in our relationship, I would get angry and I would get defensive and, you know, again, either end the conversation or shout louder, whatever it might be. Um, I've, I've become more aware of it now, uh, naturally. It's something that I look out for when those things happen. And what I've started to realize is, you know, as I mentioned a bit, it's, it's what makes me angry is just that, is that she's asking the exact right question that I don't want to be forced to address or confront. But my mind, quickly in the moment, you know, a few years ago before I really started to be thoughtful about this stuff, would quickly, almost instantly convince me that, you know, my mom was being overbearing or she was trying to give her opinion too much or whatever it might be. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to inflate her head if she watches this video. There are times in which she has done that. But in these instances where I felt, because there's times where she's done that and it didn't elicit that reaction. So, right, it's not just that. It's those times where it elicited that reaction in me that it really, that it really matters. Um, and I've started, again, recognize that it's just because it was the right question. And I, and I created this whole other story that fit into my overall narrative. So, again, I bring that up just as an example of how this can come into play and how detrimental it could be. But again, just constantly trying to use some of these tools and this, this concept, this framework of, of checking your instruments. Find those flags, find those markers, whether it be in a conversation or in your own thoughts, that you can kind of latch onto and say, hey, something, something might be happening here. I might be, might be getting irrational. Um, and use those to become more aware, become more um, deliberate and thoughtful in how you make decisions, take actions.